you'll see that your circle intersects the axes at four spots, right? One on the positive y, one on the negative y, one on the positive x, one on the negative x, okay? We're going to label each of those as 1 if it's on the positive side or negative 1 if it's on the negative side. So we've got 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, and there's the center at the origin, 0, 0, okay? Now, this is a circle, center at the origin. It's a special circle because since it goes 1, 1, negative 1, negative 1, what is the size, what is the radius of this circle? One. It's exactly 1, right? Um, because we're on the Cartesian plane, it's not centimeters or meters, we just call them units, right? So it's one unit. That's the radius of this thing. Since it's one unit, we call this guy the unit circle. It's a circle with a radius of one unit, okay? Now this bad boy is going to give us a better definition for sine and a few other things as you'll see in a second as well. We're going to pop onto here one of the radii. Okay, I said the radius is one unit. Okay, so let's just stick one of the radii over here. Okay. So <coughs> you can see the Cartesian plane is broken up into four sections because there are four of them. We call them quadrants, right? Um, what we've got over here where both of the values are the x value is positive and the y value is positive. We call this guy the first quadrant. Okay. So the first quadrant, I've put a radius in there. Okay. And I'm going to show, that measures out a little angle in here. Coming up from the x-axis up to the radius I've drawn. I'm just going to call that angle theta. All right, You guys have seen we, we tend to use theta as our um, label for angles a lot. So, what I have formed in here, in this circle, is one of these right angled triangles. You see I've got the angle that I'm interested in over in the bottom left. So I have a right angled triangle happening here. I'm going to draw a line vertically down to the axis. And to complete the triangle, I'm going to draw along the x-axis until I get my 90 degrees in there. Okay. Now, the reason I've drawn this is I'm trying to draw a bridge, right? The trigonometric ratios, they start in right angled triangles. That's where they begin, okay? So I've got this right angled triangle in here, and I'm going to show us how to extend past where right angled triangles can go, right? So in this triangle, remember, radius of 1. So the hypotenuse of this triangle is 1. Do you agree with that? Mm -hmm. It's just the radius. So it's 1. Now, if I have a point up here, okay, if I have a point, I'm just going to label it P for point, okay? I'm interested in where this point actually resides, somewhere on this circle, okay? So, if you have a look, and don't, don't draw this yet, uh, you've sort of already got a triangle, so that's enough for me, okay? If I want to know the x coordinate of this point, that's this distance here, isn't it, right? This distance is the x coordinate. Um, if it was like 0 0.5 over that distance, then the coordinate would be 0 0.5 something, right? And in the same way, this vertical distance is the y coordinate. That's what y means, vertical, okay? So therefore, I'm interested in what each of these sides are. I'm going to call this one x, and this one y, because I've got horizontal and I've got vertical, okay? Now remember that this is 1. Tell me, in this triangle, we'll start with sine since that's what we're trying to redefine. What's sine theta in this triangle? Sine theta. It's, it's opposite on hypotenuse, isn't it? It's y over 1, which is just y. Do you agree with that? Okay. Now, while we're at it, since you've got y there, you can see I can make a similar kind of argument to get the length of x, right? x is the adjacent, and if I compare it to the hypotenuse, which, I rubbed it off, which ratio is adjacent to the hypotenuse? It's cos, isn't it? Cosine. So I could say cos theta is adjacent on hypotenuse. Do you see that? x over 1, which of course is just x. Okay, so now I'm going to bring that over to our diagram here, right? If this horizontal distance here is cos theta, and this vertical distance here is sine theta, 
those are the coordinates of p cos theta sine theta. That's where p is, right? Because when you ask for coordinates, if I say, don't draw this, if I say, all right, he is 3 and he is 4, right? You would say, oh, I know what the coordinates of this thing are, right? This distance is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, so that's the x coordinate. And then you go up, 1, 2, 3, and that's the y coordinate, okay? So I have gone horizontally this distance, so that's what my x coordinate is. And I've gone vertically this distance, so that's what my y coordinate is. Okay, now. Have a think about this, right? And think about that graph that you drew about five minutes ago, right? If the x coordinate is cos and the y coordinate is sine, think about, here's theta, think about what would happen if I made theta zero. You remember that's that not triangle, right? It's like, here's the bottom and then here's the other side because in between those is zero degrees, right? If theta came down to zero, here's where my inverted commas triangle would be, right? It would be going down to here on the circle. What are the coordinates of that little spot on the axis? Think about it. Hmm. Now, I've gone across one. I do my x's and then my y's because it's alphabetical, right? So I'm going to go one unit across. How far have I gone up? Zero. Zero. I haven't gone up, right? I'm on the axis. It's zero, okay? Which is why you see the sign is that y coordinate. There it is, right? We were looking at the graph and we were guessing that sine of zero right there in the corner is zero. It is, that's why. You can continue the argument. Remember I tried to make that right angle triangle with two right angles in it, okay? Well, I can put a right angle here at theta. Where would it be? If I made this a right angle, it would go all the way up to here, right? Do you see that? There's my right angle in there. What are the coordinates of that point at the top? They're not going to be 1, 0, are they? They're going to be 0 and then 1. So this is for theta, that's 90 degrees. It's gone all the way up from one axis to the other. And that there is sine of 90 degrees. It's the y coordinate. Okay? So we are totally redefining the way we think of sine. There's no ratios anymore. Well, not obviously, right? I'm not talking about this over this or this over this. I'm talking about what's that coordinate over there, okay? So let's write this, right? A new definition for sine is I keep on talking about the fact that it's this y value, right? It's this guy over here, which might be 0 or 1 or anything in between, okay? A new definition for sine is the y coordinate on the unit circle. Formed by a radius. Now I'm going to um, write a long phrase here and then I'm going to explain it on the board because it's so much easier to see in a picture versus verbally, but I want you to have the verbal definition. Okay. There's a long phrase. Let me read the whole thing and then we'll look at the picture and you'll see. A new definition for sine, I would argue a better definition, is it's the y coordinate, whatever this number is, right? On the unit circle, there's my circle, formed by a radius, there he is, there's that radius, with angle theta, there's my angle, measured from a particular spot. Right? I don't just measure from anywhere, it's a little bit tricky because different angles, if you think back to bearings, uh, different angles measure from different locations. Right? This one's measuring from, read it with me, the positive x-axis. See, here's the x-axis over here, right? and there's the positive side. This one's the negative side. Right? I've got negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 going over here. Right? So I've got positive over there, that's where I start from. Now, you don't need to rewrite it all over again, but you can see this new definition for sine gives me a corresponding definition 
for cosine, right? I would write exactly the same thing out and I would change one thing, right? Cosine is this guy over here, right? It's not the y coordinate, it's the x coordinate. You see that? So a new definition for cosine is the x coordinate on the unit circle formed by etc, etc, etc. Okay? So these two are linked together now in a new way. Now this is really powerful. 